Okay, so in this video, we want to find all the zeros, uh, real and complex, uh, for this given function. Okay, so uh, so in this particular problem, uh, we're not given we're not given any of the roots. Okay, so we sort of have to start from scratch. Okay, so to get a feel for what we're looking for, um, let's first create a, a list of all the uh, possible rational zeros, okay? All right, so to do that, okay, we look at the number of sign changes, okay? And so there is one here, okay? Um, so it's positive, negative, negative, then positive, and then negative, okay? So there's three sign changes. So this is going to imply that there's going to be okay, three, right? So there's three or one positive real solution. Okay, so we could have three of them that are positive, right? three positive real solutions, or, or just one positive real solution, okay. right? And so you always, remember, so you always count down by, by an even amount, right? So we have three, so we count down by even, right? So three, one. If it was five, then it'd be five, three, and then one. If it was four, then it'd be four, two, and then zero. All right, uh, let's look for the, uh, let's see if, let's look for the, uh, see how many possible negative real solutions there are. So to do that, we have to evaluate the function at minus f. Okay, Okay, so substitute in negative x, and let's simplify this. So this is going to be 3x to the power of 4, because right, minus x to the fourth power would be positive. So anything that you, so minus raised to an even power is going to be positive, right? Minus raised to an odd, it's going to be negative, okay? So we have, this is going to be x cubed, right? Negative x cubed, and then we have a negative here. So this is going to be 7x cubed. This will be minus 31x squared. This will be minus 167x minus 52. Okay. All right, so this tells us that we have, uh, looking at the sign change, right? We have just one here, okay? Okay, so just one sign change. And so that's going to imply that we have possibly one, uh, one negative real solution. All right. Okay, so let's, in order to start our search for, for the roots, let's create a list of possible rational zeros, uh, okay? And to do that, okay, uh, we, we will basically take the factors of this constant divided by all the possible factors of this coefficient, okay? All right, so we have factors of 52, all divided by the possible factors of three. 
and we include the positive and negative. So I'll just put that here. Okay. So we have obviously one. Okay. Uh, two. Right. Two is a factor of fifty-two because it's even. Um, we know four. Okay. What else? Four. Um, thirteen because we. Right, uh, four times thirteen is fifty-two, and then we have the number itself. Okay. So then, look at all the possible factors of look all the factors. Sorry, all the factors of three. So plus or minus one, and then three, and then we take right. So then we take the right. We take each number and divide it by each of these. So all so right all the possible ones. Okay, so this is going to give us, okay, so we have plus or minus one here, so one over one, one third, and then we have uh, two, so moving on to two, we get two thirds here, okay, and two, right, because we have two divided by one is two, two thirds, okay, moving on to four, four over one is four, Four over three, okay, and then moving on to thirteen, we have thirteen over one, okay, thirteen over three, and then moving to fifty-two, so we have fifty-two, and then uh, fifty-two over three. Okay. And remember, we're considering plus or minus of these. So what this is saying is that if this polynomial has a rational zero, then it must be it must be in this list somewhere. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, it may not even have a rational zero. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is a good place for us to for us to start to uh, good place for us to start our search. By the way, uh, this was using the uh, Viscardi's rule of signs. Okay. Okay. So let's. Okay. So let's uh, start with. Uh, usually, usually, always like to start with one because it's the easiest to deal with. Um, I'm going to say right now. I worked this problem out ahead of time, so one is not a. So one doesn't work. In other words, it's not going to give us a remainder zero. However, uh, one. So that's true for plus or minus one. Okay. So it's. Um, so you can verify that and see, right? Let's check to see if you you don't get a remainder of zero. Then when I try one third, that actually works. Okay, so all right. So let's do that. Okay. And we're using synthetic division here. Okay, so okay, so using one third, okay, and we put the coefficients here. So three minus seven. 31, 167, and negative 52. And again, if you're missing, if you're missing a term here, then you just put a zero for that for that term as a placeholder. Okay, let's start our process here. Okay, and it should be minus 31 there. Okay. All right, so let's start this. Okay, so we bring down the three, okay? Uh, three times one third, that's one. So we put that result there. Negative seven minus one, sorry, negative seven plus one, it's gonna be negative six. Negative six times one third is gonna be negative two. And then we get uh, yeah, negative 33 here. Okay, negative 33, okay? Uh, divide by three is going to be a negative 11. One sixty-seven minus eleven. That's one fifty-six. One fifty-six divided by three turns out to be fifty-two, and that's going to give us zero here. Okay. So again, we bring down three. We say three times one third is one. Minus seven plus one is negative six. Negative six times one third, or you can say it's negative six divided by three is negative two. Negative thirty-one minus two is negative thirty-three. Negative thirty-three divided by three is Negative 11, 167 minus 11 is 156. 156 divided by 3 is 52. So we get zero there. Okay. 
So that right. So remember, uh, this is right. This is your remainder. Okay. And so we, we when we get a remainder of zero, that basically tells us that we found a root here. Okay. So one third is a is a root for this polynomial. Okay, that's good. All right. So next one is. This is the constant, okay? Remember, this is constant. This is the coefficient for x, the coefficient for x squared, okay? And the coefficient for x to the power three. So this, right, this result should always be one less degree than the original degree, okay? So degree four here, this is gonna give us degree three. Okay, so we have three x to the power three minus six x squared minus 33x plus 156. Okay, see how that works? So, okay, this is for x, the coefficient for x, the coefficient for x squared, and the coefficient for x cubed. Okay. All right, so now, using our same list, okay, because this is actually, a, since this is a, uh, this is a factor, we found, not only did we find a root, for this polynomial, but we we also found a um, a factor, right, for this polynomial. Okay, and so we can you, again go back to our list and um, and then look, you know, try something here because if this right if if right if this uh, has a rational zero, then it must be in this list as well because this is coming directly from this result. All right, so let's try negative four, right? Okay, so again, we bring down this number. So three times negative four is minus 12. Okay, uh, negative six minus 12 is gonna give us negative 18. Negative 18 times negative uh, four is going to be uh, 72, okay. 72 minus 33, that's going to give us 39, okay, and then 39 times negative four is going to be negative 156, so again, we get zero here, okay, so just like up here, right, because the remainder is zero, this is a root, Get remainder zero here, so this is a root. Okay, so we found two roots now. Okay, so we can continue. You know, we can continue uh, selecting, you know, selecting uh, values from here and and trying to see if it's uh, see if we can find another zero. But in gen generally speaking, when we end up with a um, quad when we end up with a quadratic. Like this, this is going to be for a quadratic function. Then we can either we can use complete the square, or we can use the quadratic formula. So that way we don't have to keep trying these out. Okay, and also it may not even maybe the solution to this may not even be uh, it may not even have a rational zero anymore. Okay, all right. So when you get to this point, right when, when you end up with a quadratic, you know use either complete the square or um, or the quadratic formula, okay? All right, so let's write out our function for this. So we have three X to the power two now, minus 18 X plus 39. Okay, so remember this is, this is our remainder zero. That's the constant. This is the coefficient for X, and this is the coefficient for X squared. And, and uh, and always keep this in mind, right? Every time you, when we do this process, right, it reduces by one degree, right? So this was degree three. We did this again, so we get end up with degree two. Okay. So we gotta figure out, right? Uh, we gotta solve that. Okay, we gotta find our roots from that. And because each of these is basically divisible by three, right? We can factor out a three. All right, so that's going to give us three times x squared 
minus six X, okay? And then plus what? Uh, plus, yeah, 13. 13 times three is going to be 39. Okay, so we can divide both, both sides by three. Remember that these kind of coefficients don't affect the, uh, they don't affect the solution, okay? They affect the graph, but they don't, but they don't affect the, um, uh, they don't affect the roots, okay? All right. Okay, so let's use the quadratic formula. So if x equals to negative b plus or minus, make sure this is that y'all are seeing this here. Okay. Okay, so we have x equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Remember that this part right here underneath the square root is what's called the discriminant. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our values. Okay, so we have one here. A is one, B is negative six, and C is 13. So negative one for A, B is negative six, C is 13. Okay, so we're gonna get minus, so negative and a negative, that's gonna give us positive six. And then we have square root of negative six squared. So that's 36 minus four times one times 13. And all that is divided by two times A and A is one. Okay. All right, so we end up getting, okay. All right, so let's see. Check something here real quick. So four, 52, so, yep. And divided by two. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see, we end up getting, um, negative 16 underneath there, okay? Okay. Yeah. Let's double check. All right, so this is going to give us negative 16 underneath the square root. There it is. Okay, so we have a, so basically the, the uh, discriminant here is less than zero. So that means we're gonna end up with a complex solution here, okay? So what is negative, what is the square root of minus 16? Well, let's simply, let's look at that here. So minus 16, remember, so that's the same thing as square root of negative one times square root of 16. Square root of negative one is I, remember? Right? And then square root of 16 is four. Okay, so we end up getting four i here. Okay. Okay, so this is i, right? And we take the square root of 16, which is four. So we can write this way, four i. So that is going to give us, okay, so we have six plus or minus four i divided by two. Okay. All right, so, okay, this is the same thing as six over two plus or minus four i over two. And that is the same as, right, so we have two over six, which is three, and then four over, four over two is two, so we get plus or minus two i here, okay? And there's our, right, so there's, there's our solutions, okay? All right, so let's see. Okay, that's right. Yep. 
Okay, so there they are, right? So we have one third, negative four, and three plus or minus two i. So again, we get, right? We have two solutions here, and we have two here if you count the plus or minus. So when you add those up, we get a total of four. Okay, All right? So that just, right, degree four. The other thing, right? Remember that in the beginning, we said though that there will be either three positive real solutions or one positive real solution. So we end up, we do end up with one positive here and we end up with one negative real solution here, okay? All right. And then we get two complex solutions here, okay? All right. So those are our solutions, okay? All right, so um, hopefully, uh, so hopefully I'll understand this process and it's, um, and that you all can, um, I can practice more of the problems.